The movie starts with a semi-conscious Sawa being taken somewhere against her will. She regains her senses and kills her perverted target in an elevator. Sawa shoots him in the head, and the bullet is so powerful that it creates a hole through his blocking hand and blows his head apart. We then see that she is being followed by a man. We learn that her father was a cop who fought the flesh cartels, but the emir killed him and her mother. Now, she kills them one by one, seeking revenge until they lead her to the emir. Carl Lacquer arrives at the scene and meticulously gathers all the details of the incident involving the deceased man named Mikhail Krastov. Carl Lacquer is not just any detective, he operates on the fringes of the law, working in a gray area where he supplies Sawa with an arsenal of guns and a variety of drugs. Her narcotic of choice is a substance known as AMP, designed to enhance her abilities as an efficient killer, while having the severe side effect of degrading her memory. To ensure maximum effectiveness, Carl administers the AMP to her via injection, making sure she is always ready for her next deadly mission. Sawa seeks out Vic Thornhill to secure safe passage from her current location. At Vic's hideout, he resorts to torturing Krastov's partner to extract information about the location of a stash of cash. Vic Thornhill, known for his ruthless methods, uses a pen to menace his competitor, Jebby, threatening to escalate the torture further. After inspecting her purse, Vic proposes that they allow Sawa to showcase her skills to the old man. If he is satisfied, they can proceed with their plans. They then took her to where an elderly man was waiting for her. She appears to sexually please him, but ultimately, she kills him. She then exits the room and eliminates the guard who is waiting for Krastov's partner. Urgently, she attempts to intimidate the partner into revealing the precise time and location of the Emir's shipment, but he manages to escape without divulging any information. Despite her relentless pursuit to uncover crucial details, she eventually leaves the location only to encounter the man who had been following her earlier. Introducing himself as Oburi, he noticed Sawa's distant recognition amid fleeting glimpses of childhood memories. Oburi elaborated on Amp's role in treating PTSD among security forces, highlighting its dual effect of erasing emotional scars and instilling a false sense of invincibility. He earnestly conveyed to Sawa that seeking revenge on the Emir would not resurrect her parents. Drawing from a seemingly personal connection, he mentioned knowing her parents parents, and urged her to consider quitting Amp. With that, he departed, leaving Sawa to ponder the weight of his advice in the silence that followed. In the quiet of her room, Sawa pondered Oburi's cryptic words, trying to piece together fragments of memory that seemed just out of reach. Akur's arrival disrupted her thoughts, his presence a solemn reminder of the painful past she struggled to remember. Akur's concern intensified. He expressed how he had put everything on the line for Sawa, with Vic Thornhill and Jeppy as potential witnesses. He warned that pushing further could lead back to him. Akur revealed that his involvement stemmed from his partnership with Sawa's father, his voice carrying a blend of remorse and steadfast loyalty. When two numbers gang members break into Jeppy's apartment after tailing Sawa, she discovers his meticulously arranged police uniform and a heartwarming policeman's family day photo in his neatly kept bedroom. The scene resonates with the dedication Jeppy had for his profession. However, before she can fully absorb the significance of these personal items, the numbers gang brutally murders him in cold blood, shattering any chance of closure or justice for Sawa and deepening the intensity of her mission. Sawa makes a desperate attempt to rescue Jeppy's daughter, Naima, but the numbers gang tracks her down and captures the young girl. Just as they are about to execute Sawa, Oburi intervenes, arriving in the nick of time to foil the numbers' plans and save Sawa. While Oburi's intervention prevents Sawa from being killed, Naima remains captured by the numbers gang. Oburi takes her to his place, but Sawa continues to struggle with the effects of the AMP. Once back to her senses, they resolve to embark on a quest to find the girl, Naima. Arriving at the location where Naima was held captive, they successfully free her, but their efforts are thwarted by a woman who demands ransom for Naima's release. Sawa engages in a fierce altercation with the woman, during which the woman manages to alert her accomplices. Despite their best efforts, the group manages to escape with both Naima and another captive girl. Akura arrives and observes Oburi taking Sawa to his place through surveillance footage. Enraged, he demands the video to run facial recognition. Akur's frustration stems from seeing Sawa involved with others, fearing it could complicate their mission and jeopardize their safety. After transforming herself into a seductive guise, Sawa smoothly navigates the club scene before swiftly incapacitating a bouncer at Staggy's club with a stun gun. Retreating to a strategic vantage in the restroom, she patiently awaits Staggy's arrival.
arrival. When he emerges, she decisively eliminates his guards and even his twin brother, demanding crucial information regarding the Emir's upcoming shipment. Amidst the chaos, a lone guard attempts to intervene, but is swiftly neutralized by Sawa's lethal efficiency. As Staggy tries to flee in his sleek black car, Sawa silently slips into the back seat, determined and focused. She calmly but firmly pressures Staggy to spill the details. Reluctantly, he reveals that tomorrow night at 10, four girls will arrive at the main container yard in a meat truck disguise. This revelation is crucial, driving Sawa forward with renewed determination and a clear goal in mind. Each word Staggy speaks hangs heavily in the tense air, emphasizing the gravity of the situation for both of them. In a sudden burst of resistance from Staggy, Sawa swiftly grabs her keys and plunges them into his eyes, incapacitating him instantly. The struggle is brief, but fierce, ending with Staggy slumping lifelessly in his seat. Sawa wastes no time, swiftly exiting the car and disappearing into the night, leaving behind a scene of stark and unexpected violence. After Oburi safely escorted the girls to a secure shelter, he found himself outnumbered and cornered by adversaries. Despite the odds stacked against him, Oburi deftly evaded capture, slipping away into the shadows with a combination of skillful maneuvering and quick thinking. Akur receives word that the police are analyzing the girls' clothing and the bullet casings. It appears that the weapon used matches the one used to kill Kratzov. The discovery heightens the tension, suggesting a potentially disturbing connection between the recent events and the earlier crime. Akura decides to eliminate the evidence, including the surveillance camera footage. With a calculated precision, he ensures that any trace linking him or others to the events is erased. Sawa's mind drifts back to memories of her family, a bittersweet recollection that fuels her resolve. With a determined sigh, she decides to proceed to the scheduled shipment. The thought of justice and closure propels her forward, despite the emotional weight of her reminiscence. After arriving at the container yard, Sawa stealthily infiltrates the premises. As she carefully navigates through the shadows, a sudden movement catches her off guard. A guard spots her. Reacting swiftly, Sawa incapacitates him with a decisive blow, but before she can secure her position, another guard surprises her from behind, striking her unconscious. Sawa awakens in a dim slaughterhouse. Her hands are securely tied, dangling perilously over a vat of boiling oil, heightening the tension of her predicament. They threaten Sawa, demanding that she reveal her employer's name and threatening to submerge her hands into the boiling oil if she refuses to cooperate. After defiantly refusing to disclose her employer's name, Sawa swiftly turns the tables on the guard. With a surge of adrenaline, she seizes the opportunity, overpowering him with a sudden, decisive strike. Spotting a nearby knife sharpener, she grabs it and forcefully drives it up Vic Thornhill's nose, swiftly neutralizing his threat and ensuring her escape with ruthless efficiency. After dispatching Vic Thornhill with brutal efficiency, Sawa breaks free from her bindings and enters into a fierce battle with the remaining guards. Despite the overwhelming odds, she taps into her training and resourcefulness, using every advantage to outmaneuver and outpower her adversaries. With determination driving her every move, she skillfully evades capture and disappears into the shadows, leaving behind a scene of chaos and resolute determination. Her relentless pursuit leads her to finally confront and eliminate the Emir, bringing closure to her quest for justice with a final, decisive act. During her restless sleep, Sawa's mind is haunted by a vivid image, the clear scarred face of the man who brutally took her parents' lives, etched into her memory with haunting clarity. When she wakes, Akura gently informs Sawa that she's been off the grid for days. He tries to offer her support, but she rejects it, her resolve unyielding. She adamantly asserts that the Amir cannot be held responsible for her parents' deaths, driven by a conviction that leads her down a path of seeking the true perpetrator. This leads to a heated argument between Akura and Sawa. Akura tries earnestly to convince her that the man she saw in her memories is just the gunman, not the mastermind behind her parents' murder. However, Sawa remains steadfast in her belief, fueled by her unwavering determination to uncover the truth and bring justice to her family's memory. Sawa, fueled by her unwavering determination, confronts Oburi and forces him to disclose all that he knows. Reluctantly, he leads her to an underground location and points her towards a specific spot. As she steps forward, her heart races with a mix of anticipation and dread. There, standing before her, is Officer Breedlove, the man
man whose scarred face has tormented her dreams. He holds the key to unraveling the mystery behind her parents' tragic fate. Brie Love's gravelly voice recounted their shared history, explaining how her father had been his friend and colleague. He detailed the impact of sulfur mustard and the disappearance of state weapons after the government's collapse, along with thefts from their unit. In a moment of raw emotion, Brie Love's voice quivered as he confessed the truth. He revealed that he hadn't pulled the trigger. His words heavy with burden of years spent carrying guilt and regret. His anguished tone betrayed the depth of his suffering. Breedlove disclosed how his son had been used to silence him, manipulating his life and orchestrating events to obscure someone else's wrongdoing. He urged her to confront the mastermind who had twisted her memories and fabricated a false reality to manipulate her. As she stepped outside, it dawned on her that Oburi had been the one who rang the bell that night her parents were killed. The realization hit hard. Before they could process the revelation, Karl Akura suddenly appeared, gun drawn, standing ominously before them. Akura fired an op dart at Sawa, the impact visibly weakening her as she struggled to maintain her composure. In a tense confrontation, Akura escorted Oburi with lethal intent, but Breedlove intervened, firing at Akura. Despite his effort, Akura fatally shot Breedlove. Sawa, seizing the moment, finally had her opportunity and aimed to kill Akur. However, she chose to leave justice to the police, opting not to take matters into her own hands. In the final scene, Sawa and Oburi seek refuge at Naima's safe house, finding solace in reminiscing about their shared past. Don't forget to like this video and subscribe to our channel. Thanks for watching.